church. How's everyone doing? It's a beautiful morning. Uh, Let's stand together. I'm going to read from God's word. Uh, One of my favorite uh, verses, Hebrews 12. Uh, We'll start with verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings to us so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that's been set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for joy who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. That's why we worship today, right? And as we, as we uh, dive into this morning, as we worship, as we uh, learn a little bit about uh, the Great Commission, uh, we just, I just want to, to frame our Sunday morning that uh, Jesus is king. He is the founder and perfecter of our faith, and uh, we can worship uh, freely because of that. So let's worship this morning. You sing your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy is wide, because you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, Chaos fell in line. I know, cause I've seen it in my life. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, and the tide is high. Put your part in the water. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start. Call me yours. You said my future's full of your hope. You never fail, so I know that you'll never fail me. You said your love will never give up. You said your grace is always enough. You said your heart could never forget or forsake me. You said you're safe, you call me yours. You said my future's full of your hope. You never fail, so I know that you'll never fail me. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, Take 
Incredible. If I can have the ushers uh, come down and get ready to take uh, tithes and offerings. Uh, while they're getting ready to come down, I'm going to go ahead and just read this really quick before we pray over and bless the offering. But just come down and be ready. Great. Okay, so that, let me, I want to share this with you. I want to share 2 Corinthians uh, 9, chapter 9, verse 10 through 11. And it goes like this. This is out of the New Living Translation. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when, you, and when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So let's pray and bless the offering. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to bless this offering. I ask you, Lord, to multiply it according to your will and according to your purpose, Father. I ask you, Lord, to bless those that have to give and bless those that don't have to give so they can give another time. And I just thank you, Lord, and I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. A couple of things uh, this morning. One is, uh, I was hoping Tanner would be here to do announcements, but we got somebody to help out. The other thing that is today, to me, a little bit sad, it's, it's Andrew's last Sunday that he's with us on a regular basis. So, how many have really enjoyed him? <laughs> Andrew, we, we can't thank you enough, and that is not enough, but... Uh, we hope you'll take your wife out for a little get together and yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's less, it's less than a million bucks. You, that's, you're still working on that, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Lord bless you. And I uh, got Jay Bach with a few announcements. We'll see how he does. Good morning, everybody. So there will be a business, uh, congregational business meeting in the fellowship hall immediately after this morning's service to discuss the vote on amend, amended 2024 budget, as well as a sabbatical update. The men's barbecue and bullets gathering is today after the congregational business meeting out at the gun club. See Rob Gong before the business meeting if you haven't signed up yet. Um, we will be having our annual ladies' tea on Saturday, May 11th at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Michelle Hyatt, Marlon's lovely wife, will be our speaker. There's <laughs> more information in Thursday's e-bulletin and today's paper bulletin. Your generous, uh, generous giving helps support our fellowship events, such as today's barbecue and women's tea. Thank you. All right. That wasn't half bad. You got a I think you have a regular gig now. Uh, I just have to say it's been a blessing for me to be here the last couple months. Um, it's just been such a joy to make new friends. Uh, what, a, what a great opportunity to just be a part of the larger church and to be able to worship together. And so I appreciate all of you, and I appreciate this team. I mean, can you guys give it up for the team, honestly? They're just like... It, you know, to step into a space where uh, there are just amazing, not only just musicians, but people who have awesome hearts and who love Jesus. And so every Thursday, if we had a rehearsal or Sunday morning, it's just been a joy to be here. So with that said, let's stand up, we'll greet our neighbors, and we'll continue in worship this morning.
Praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters, my enemies drown in. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise when I feel it, praise when I don't. Praise cause I know you're still my praise is a weapon it's more than a sound my praise is the shout that brings Jericho down as long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord oh my soul Praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. We praise, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Sorry, <laughs> let's start this over. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was a lost, but now. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and raised my tears. Weary. How precious. My 
chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we are yours. You are ours, Lord. And what a blessing that is, Lord, that we get to call you our Lord, our Savior, our King. Uh, So be with us this morning as we continue and worship through hearing of your word, God. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. Uh, Thank you for knowing us. And uh, we're just so grateful. We're grateful that you you do know us, that you know our names, that you've called us uh, to you. Be with us this morning. In your name, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the children if they would want to come up to the front row. And uh, I'm asking Caleb to come get started. He's going to give our uh, missionary trip presentation update report. What are you giving us today, Caleb? One of, one of those things? Something like that? Something like that. Okay. And I wanted, I wanted you guys all in the front row. So uh, here at the Covenant Church. It's all about what is God's mission and us being on mission. Can you say on mission? On mission. mission. Beautiful. So today we're going to talk a lot about that and we have an example. Caleb just went on a missions trip so now he's going to tell us what it was like. So I wanted you up close to be able to see, yeah, wherever there's room, maybe on the other side, wherever, wherever you want. Yeah, there you go. Good, good to see you today. All right. And, uh, yeah, they, they're ready to go. They'll give you five if, if you want them to. And uh, so you guys ready? He's got pictures. Man, pictures are always good. And that's why I got you up to the front row to see him really good. All right. Caleb, we're so glad you went. And Lord bless as you share with us today. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about my trip. I was able to go to Cuba on the last week of March um, with a group called Filter of Hope. 
the mission of Filter of Hope is really to give people in poverty in third world countries access to clean water and access to the gospel, and that's really what we got to do on this trip. Um, it was really incredible, and we got to see God's provision really from the start. Um, the next picture I want to show you is really before we actually left for the trip. Um, it was us in the airport, um, and this, was, this picture is important just because um, it was the last picture that could have been potentially taken with my friend uh, Dakota. He's next to me in the picture. Um, and so we found out the morning we left that to get into Cuba, you need a passport that's valid for six months beyond when you arrive. And Dakota's passport was valid for two months after we arrived. So we called up American Airlines and we were like, we have this problem, will he get into Cuba? And they said, probably not. Um, he'll probably get to the Fresno airport and they'll probably send him home. Um, if he makes it past that, he'll probably get sent back in Miami or at worst in Cuba. Um, so he showed up to the airport that night, um, ready to go, he had his bags packed, but he also had an Uber ready to go in case they didn't let him. Um, the Fresno airport, uh, we got there, it, they were actually evacuated when we got there, there was like a fire or something. So, you know, fun travels from the start. Um, but we were able to get inside and then the, the security agent was like, we're not gonna be the ones to stop him, he can get past Fresno. We made it to Miami, they let him through in Miami. We made it to Cuba, and they spent quite a while looking at his passport. They looked at his passport, they looked at the, at the computer screen, looked at Dakota, and they said, welcome to Cuba. So he made it to Cuba. So yeah, we just got to see God's provision like that really from the start of the trip. Um, the next picture I wanna show you, uh, after we left from the airport, we went to the town of Vinales, Cuba, uh, which is an agricultural village. Um, it's in Eastern Cuba, and it's really pretty. Like you can see the houses um, here, like they're all brightly colored, um, there's just, on those streets are like old 1950s cars because Cuba had the embargoes and all that. And then they've got oxen, they've got horses, just quite the variety of stuff going on. Um, it's a really beautiful place. Um, but the problem with Vinales is their water quality is horrendous. Um, it's some of the worst in Cuba. Um, the people there, um, they'll either have to boil their water, that's what most of them do. Um, if you're a tourist to Vinales, uh, typically you get bottled water, but most of the people living there just don't have the money to afford that. Um, so they'll boil their water. A lot of them rely on electric stoves, which can be a problem because in Cuba, there's a lot of frequent power outages. We had three while we were there. Um, so just really in, uh, inaccessible, high quality water there. Um, so our mission really was to give them access to water filters, which I'll show in the next picture. Um, they're really, really cheap, inexpensive. So we would go to the families, we would give them, um, I don't know if you can see, but attached to the bucket is the water filter, um, really small, really cheap. We could just put them in our backpacks, hike in. Um, they'd give us the bucket, we'd attach um, the water filter and get them set up. Um, and really, the water bottles I have up here are just kind of a demonstration of what we did. So their water looks kind of clear. It's more clear than this. Um, so what we would do, we'd actually scoop dirt into the water. And a lot of the families were like, no, what are you doing? Um, but we would scoop dirt into the water just to show them how clean the filter was able to make it. So it'd go in looking like this, and it'd come out looking nice and clean like this. And a lot of the families were really impressed, really amazed, and just super excited that they now had access to something like this. Um, so that was just super cool. Um, we had a lot of really cool interactions with the families, but I don't have time to tell you all of them, so I'll just go over two. Um, the first one I wanted to share is the story of Esperanza. Uh, we went to her house on the second day, and this story really testifies to um, just the inaccess to the gospel in this region. Um, Esperanza's in the center of this photo, and she has pretty much zero spiritual background. Um, at the age of like five, her father told her, you know, God exists, you should believe in God. And that's the entirety of all that she's heard about the gospel. She's never been to church. She doesn't know how to read, so she didn't have access to a Bible or anything like that. So really our conversation with her was the first time that she heard anything like this. Um, and it was just really cool to see the way she responded and the way she was so overjoyed just to accept Jesus and hear the good news about what he'd done for her. So that was such a cool opportunity. Um, and yeah, we were able to connect her with someone from the local church and just get her set up with that. So it was, it was such an opportunity to just make an impact in this community. And then the next uh, family I wanted to show you, we actually went up into the hills outside of Vinales on the last day we were there. Um, this family is Mari and Maria. Mari's on the left side of this photo, and then her mother Maria is in the wheelchair. Um, so we were able to talk to them, and actually while we were installing a water filter for them, we learned that her daughter lived next door so we invited her daughter over and were able to get her a filter. And then her daughter's daughter 
came over. So we had four generations of these, these women in this room at the one time. We were able to get all of them hooked up with a filter, and we were able to share the gospel with them. And the coolest part was they were just so ecstatic to accept it. Um, we had just kind of a party after um, they all accepted it. The room just erupted into cheers. People were shouting. Um, it, was, it was just such a cool opportunity. So again, God was really at work before this opportunity. Um, actually, the reason we were able to get connected uh, with this family was because our guide, Ariana, knew them for, I think, like 10 years before this and had been praying for this opportunity throughout that 10 years. Um, we were able to get this family connected with people from the local church again. So just God was at work before we made it to Cuba while we were in Cuba, and he's still at work now. Just um, And that's been so cool to see. Um, and then just kind of a broader scope of what this uh, trip was all about, the last picture I'll show. Um, this is the Filter of Hope team. So it was a group of us from Fresno State and then a group from UCLA. So there were probably 30 of us in all. Um, we had translators, and then the people from the local church are also in this photo. And throughout the course of the trip, we were able to give people, uh, we were able to give 78 families water filters. Um, we were able to share the gospel with 120 people, and 66 of those accepted Christ and committed their lives to him. So just incredible stuff. So really, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to go to Cuba. I mean, your support really made it possible for me to go. So thank you so much. It's really been an answer to prayer. Um, and yeah, kids, if you ever get the opportunity to do this, definitely say yes, because God does some cool stuff. So thank you all so much. So Caleb, thank you so much for going on the trip. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, yeah, boys and girls, you, you heard his invitation. If you get to go on one of these someday, definitely take the opportunity and go. So I want us to have a word of prayer. Maybe you lift your hand towards God, maybe towards Caleb, although only Caleb only did what God asked him to do and gave him the opportunity. So let's, let's lift our hands together and let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that we could come here today and we could uh, see your hand at work. You're, you're at work around the world, and Cuba is definitely a good example of that. And I just thank you for what Caleb got to be a part of, for, for what that did in his own heart, and what uh, he contributed to the team, and then uh, how they got to reach out to so many. And so we just rejoice in that, and I just thank you for uh, taking him on a trip, bringing him home back safe, and now, Lord, uh, how he might live differently because of this experience. We just commit that into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, is, uh, is it okay if somebody, one of these kids, maybe they want to try it. Do you want to try this water? No, no. no. You want me to leave it up here for No, I, no. Okay. while I'm talking, I'm going to get my own over here. I, 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 want it to, I want it to be safe. I don't want you to be messing with it. Okay, boys and girls, you can go to Children's Church if you're headed that way, but uh, let's, I want to give five from you and praise Jesus together and have a really good day. Thanks for coming up and listening. Okay? All right, you guys can go. Huh? Uh, I think so. Let's talk after. You're going to give me five? There we go. All right, you guys. Have a good one. <laughs> uh, that's good. We should we should probably uh, greet our neighbor again, but uh, we'll be okay. Just in case I need this. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you'll come. You'll bring the good stuff back up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So. Well, that's so good, Caleb, and, and I, I really uh, thank you for sharing today because it, it fits in. Um, church, what, I'm, what we're trying to do here in the month of April is have it be the focus, the Great Commission. And so last week, we, we had um, Chuck here from the camp, from Mission Springs, and he spoke about the church at its best, if you remember. And boy, the church is at its best when we're on task, when we're on mission, when we're taking God's word in and then putting it into practice. So uh, that's last week. Today we're going to, going to talk about the Great Commission. You can turn to Matthew if you would like. 
and get ready to go. Next week, the Fredericksons are here. So again, we're on, we're on task with this mission thing. It's a great uh, month to do that. And then uh, I'll have one last week to look, maybe circle back here to the Great Commission or other uh, parts of what it means to be on mission. So, okay, ready to go with that? Good. Well, I'm so glad that Jesus, before he left this earth with his first appearance on earth, the first advent, that he had some words to tell his followers before he left. And those words are still good for us today. And that's right here in Matthew 28. It's the very end. Uh, can't you see, those of you who have seen Chosen, can't you see Matthew uh, writing, writing down, you know, what Jesus said? And uh, so here he is, and here's, the last, here's some of the last words uh, Jesus said before he ascended and went to the Father. He said, go to the people of all nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to do everything I have told you. And can you see that uh, those followers, it had to be quite a season for them. You know, they... They, they all, as much as even Peter said, hey, Lord, I will never deny you. By the time the cock crowed, he, he denied him. And, you know, that no, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't, I don't know him. And uh, I know I would have done the same thing under the same pressure. And really all the disciples are gone. And that didn't really bother Jesus. He knew what his mission was. He knew what he invited his followers to. And then, you know, it's, it's a free world. God put free choice into each of us. You can either obey and and follow your savior, your Lord, your master, your teacher, or you can think, "Mm, no, I think I have a better plan, a better way. And you can go try that out. Okay. Anybody here uh, tried out the other plan? Yeah. And, and how'd that go? You know, we should line up for testimonies on how that went. <laughs> and so, uh, to me, why this, these are such important words is because, uh, church, they're still for us today. If we're going to be on mission, we're going to be about what Caleb was about what all of our missionaries are about, what many of you are about day in and day out, we're going to go make disciples. We're going to go, just like he said, hey, people of all nations, all countries around the world, make them my disciples, Jesus said. And yes, baptize them. Why baptize? Because we had baptism here on sunrise service during Easter. And why baptize? Because when that person is standing there and they say, I choose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, then I join him in his death and burial and in his resurrection. Amen? Yeah, amen. Vernon, we had a great time out at your place, so thank you for that. And then to teach them everything. Now, (laughs) do you think those disciples in in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do you think everything that Jesus taught is is in those books? What I think, everything that God wants us to know is in those books, right? But... I, I think it was even John uh, or one of them said, oh, if you included everything that Jesus said, you know, it would take so many books, you, you know, you, could, you couldn't have a library big enough. And so uh, what we have in God's word is what Jesus wants us to know, what he taught, and we're to go and teach and tell the world that. And then uh, these next few verses I want to look at, this is amazing because 
Jesus didn't just say this one time. He said it in different ways at least five times. In each gospel, I'm going to have us look over in Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And so that's Mark. And Mark had the quick little gospel. If you want to read the gospel in quick action, you read Mark. It's not as many chapters, but Mark's just rolling through the life of Christ in, in a very quick, precise way. Then we get to Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And Luke was the doctor. And um, I, I call this a Luke. It was probably hard to read. Have you ever tried to read your doctor's handwriting? Okay, so Luke was a doctor, and it, and it was probably hard to read, but you can be sure the details were there. You know, doctors, they don't miss many details. You know, you, you get in, and it goes, hey, how can I help you today? And you go, oh, I'm fine. And they go, well, how come in here? Well, you know, and they start probably asking you questions, and pretty soon all the details are out. And that's Luke. The details are out in 249. Why were you searching for me? And this is Jesus all the way back with his parents uh, when they were, went to Jerusalem and then they were going back home up uh, toward Galilee to Nazareth. And Jesus stayed behind. And he asked, yeah, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be about, I had to be in my father's house? Another way to say that, I had to be about my father's business. So all the way back at 12 years old, there was a mission for Jesus. And for him to be about his father's business, the father's business was that he sent his son into the world, that whoever believed would have eternal life. Then um, over in Luke, I'm going to stay in Luke just for a quick minute, uh, 24, 47. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And, you know, um, we're going to get we're going to get to Acts, but I have to I just have to say it here in, in Acts. It was uh, in Jerusalem in in Judea in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And, you know, I just want to translate that for us here today at, at Covenant Church. If we're going to carry out the same mission as Jesus did, and truly we continue his mission, then we are going to make disciples in Kingsburg. We've got tri-counties and three counties. To the state. To our, the rest of our nation across the seas, and all the way around. It, most of you know I, I have a daughter, and when I point to where she is, it's all the way through to the other side. Sharing the good, good news, the, um, the gospel, all the way to the other side of the earth. And so that's what we're called to. That's, that's church. Like last week, we learned so much about when the church is at its best, it looks like Acts or Leon Acts. And, and here today we're saying, hey, what is, if we're really at it together doing what we're called to do, it means we're going to be on mission. It means it's going to be all about missions, whether that's across the street or all the way around to the other side of the earth. Then in John, again, John 20, verse 21, again, Jesus said, peace be to you, as the Father has sent me. I am sending you. And so this, uh, this whole idea of mission, it's, it's in all the Gospels. And even in Acts, in Acts, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be witnesses. Uh, and, and it's just like I said, to uh, Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And I've walked us through, what does that mean for us here in Kingsburg? All through our surrounding areas and then beyond if we're going to be on mission, that's going to be a part of what we're all about. So under apply it, I, w I want us to think about this. I just ask you a question at this point. Do I know why Jesus has me here on earth? Do you know the answer to that question? 
am I aware of his call in my life to be on mission for him? And friends, I, I just want to say, if you don't have the answer to that, will you please go to work and search that out and find it? If you need help, I want to help. I know all of our leadership wants to help our church be together and be on mission. Not floundering around, not going, yeah, I don't know why I'm here on earth. And there's a lot of that, isn't there? Where we all work and play and go and see people. There's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing here, why they're here. And church, for us to be on mission, we've got the answer. we got to give that away. We've got to show them. So go to work on that, all right? I don't want anybody uh, not aware and not knowing why they're here on earth. Um, I, this week I looked at The Purpose uh, Driven Life by Rick Warren. Some of you remember that book a while back. And I, I just kind of got the refresher and some of these passages came out and um, you know, so if you, if you, maybe you need that refresher or maybe you haven't heard of that book, but it it's, is broken down in a 40-day journey. Kind of interesting. We've been talking about 40-day journeys here at the 1030 group uh, down below, but um, the, the Purpose Driven Life is another one of those 40-day journeys to uh, see why or what are we up to? Why do, is there purpose in my life? Am I making steps forward to that? Okay, so the second thing, Jesus came on his mission to redeem or to buy back and reconcile us to himself. So this is still a part of that being on mission and a part of how we make disciples, why we make disciples, what's, what, what is happening in that. So in 2 Corinthians uh, 5.20, Paul just wrote, he said, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. So we already looked through all the Gospels, and we saw that Jesus is sending us. He's telling us to go make disciples. Now we get to Paul in his second letter to Corinthians, and he's saying, hey, guys, there's another way to say this. Remember, you're the ambassadors. You go and you represent, and you take the message. And while we're here on earth, who do we represent? Christ. And what's his message? the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, and then he says, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And we've talked about that before, but why is it so easy here on earth for us to get distance and even, even to get a problem between us and God? It just... It just seems to happen so easily. You see so many people with so much built up, so much, after a while, anger toward God or toward anything that's good, and, and they just want to tear into people and tear into problems and, and their life. And, and by getting that all out, it doesn't even seem to help anything. It probably makes it worse most of the time. And I just hope that you all see when you see the cross, and if, you, if and when you visualize Jesus on the cross, that you can hear him saying, you know what, I don't want anything between us, and I love you so much that I died for you, and I want to spend eternity, I want to spend forever with you. And so that, that's what I get out of this passage in, from Paul. Uh, just a couple of verses back in uh, verse 18, he says, All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And so, church, for us to leave today and start making steps, first off, I want to ask you, because this is what has been given us, the ministry of reconciliation. Are you, maybe ask yourself, am I available every day to do some reconciling? You know, maybe you see it in a, a close friend or someone at work or at school. 
quite a place to see it. Maybe even see it in your own family. Is there something that the Lord brings into you that taps you on the shoulder, that nudges you a little bit, that prompts you and says, hey, c- c- can you go just give a good word? Could you give a phone call? Could you, you know, I, I don't want to push too much uh, all the media stuff because some of that stuff can <laughs> lead into trouble. I personally, I don't like to write too much in writing because it might come back to haunt you. But if if you told somebody, hey, I love you and I'm praying for you, I, I don't think that would come back and haunt you. You know what I mean? If, if it's as simple as that, spread some love. Begin a reconciliation process. You might even know two people that if you call them together you might be a mediator for them and help peace come back into that relationship if god's saying hey go give those go give them a call try to meet them for coffee or something if he if he's nudging you don't say no don't hesitate that's that ministry of reconciliation that jesus came to pass around and to give us and think of that, church, if we, were, if we all helped somebody reconcile a little bit every day, what could our world become but more reconciled to God and to one another? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. And he's just saying, hey, take, take God's grace and be the co-worker with God. We, we are co-heirs with Christ. You know, we, Jesus let us in on his level. He, he took our death. He gave us his life if we receive it as a gift from him. So we're co-heirs with Christ. And now we're co-workers with God to pass a little grace around and watch reconciliation make a difference in our world. Do we all agree, man, does our world need this? It, it does. So, will I focus on and pay attention to and work at my mission, which means make disciples? And maybe you're wondering, so how do I get started? We'll pass a little reconciliation around. Take grace and give grace away and watch and see if you don't see God there in the middle of that and watch him do something. Okay. um, So today, here's what I want us to finish up with. When your work on earth is done, will your life mission be accomplished? You see, when Jesus was on that cross, and one of the last words he said was, it is finished. And then he bowed his head, and he breathed his last. What he was saying was, I, I was sent from a manger when I first arrived, and I've had these 33 years, and especially these last three, I've been on quite a mission to share the good news for mankind that there's a way that they wouldn't have to die in their sin and be separated from God forever. And so when he paid the price and hung on that cross and took our price that we could never pay, when he got done, he said, it is finished. That is special. God God has got a plan. And he knows when that plan and when that mission is finished and when it's complete. And when we can rest and go, you know, because where would you and I be if Jesus hadn't come? Now, hopefully God in his love would have had a different plan, but the plan he has is his son to come. And to make a way for our salvation. So it was for Jesus. And that's my encouragement to us today. Can 
can we think about our mission? What does God have me and you here on earth for? I, w- I was thinking of um, someone, if you go out to the cemetery and you look and you read, you know, some of the names there. And then what you see often is the date that they were born and then a little dash and then the date they passed away. And that little dash has, for most people, a big story. It's, it's their life. It's what that little dash represents all that they did when they were alive here on earth. And I'd like us for a moment to say, hey, what about my dash? What about your dash? What's that little dash going to amount to? What's it going to count for? That little dash is what God put us on earth for. Now, the question is, am I following God's plan? Am, Am I putting God into the dash in my dash? Or am I leaving him out to the edge, out on the side? And friends, I, I, I just have to join Paul when he says, hey, we implore you, be involved in the ministry of reconciliation. And I, I want to say, friends, we got to be thinking about our dash. It's such a small little thing on a, on a headstone. But it's huge right now when we're still alive here on earth because what are we doing? What are we focusing on? What are we paying attention to? Are we surrendering and submitting to Christ and saying, Lord, come, show me, lead me, nudge me, help me know when to reconcile and when to give grace. Help me know how to live this life. And so I I just want to say, Pay attention to your little dash because right now it's huge. Someday we're going to, when, when we get to heaven, <laughs> it's, it's going to be great. We probably won't be worried about our little dash anymore. But right now we're in the middle of it. Am I surrendering? Am I giving my life, my dash? Lord, do what you want with my dash. Lord, make it count for all of eternity. Lord, have my dash Help build your kingdom. Help me make disciples in my dash. Help me be a reconciler during my dash. Okay, so on the headstone is is the dash and the dates. What, what What else is usually on that headstone? Something they did. Maybe a beloved dad or husband or wife or a child or you know what usually their position where they fit probably in a family uh, some people you know probably go broader than that more you know in what they do in this world or uh, you know you could put lots of things on there and so I don't know what's going to go on your headstone maybe we don't even know what's going to go on our headstone right now. Usually someone else takes care of that, right? So here's what I want to be on your headstone, whether it gets written or not, okay? That you were an excellent disciple maker. That you were a part of God's making many disciples of all nations, Okay, I'm okay if someone over here says, hey, I feel really called to go make disciples, but I feel called halfway around the world. And then I'll talk to someone else. Hey, overseas is not my deal. I don't want to fly or sail or swim way over there. Come on, you guys. You're not, you got to laugh at swim. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, that's, that's foreign to me. Okay, okay, that's okay. And as long as you love on missionaries and, and want that gospel to go over there, I'm okay if you say, hey, my focus is right here close to home or not too far from here, somewhere where I can drive, somewhere where I can go. 
uh, just in my car or, you know, take, take my tool shop on a, in a trailer with me and boy, I'll go serve people and pass reconciliation around and love on people and take care of them, okay? So I'm okay. I just want today, it will you in your mind on your headstone see written quite a disciple maker, one who made many disciples, one who trusted Christ and did what Christ's mission was, make more disciples. Does it make sense? Are you guys seeing that? And so now, if that's going to be on your headstone, now's the time for us to go to work. Now's the time for us to say, hey, do I just walk out of here on a Sunday morning as usual? Everything's, you know, same, same, no different. Or I don't know about you, but when I watch the news and I see what's going on in the Middle East, I go, yikes. Lord, we, we always should be saying, like in Revelation, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But when you see that, you go, oh, Lord, you are coming quickly, aren't you? And am I ready? Have I shared Christ with everyone you want me to? Have I helped make disciples in a, in a firm, effective, efficient kind of a way? And, and I don't know, church, I, I think for us to get back working together, pulling together, becoming all that God wants us to be, that number one is going to be we took on his mission, which was to make disciples. That we together said, hey, how can we encourage one another? Because somebody loves something that's way around the world and someone else loves something that's right across the street, you know, in our, in our schools, in our places of work. You know, wherever God's calling each of us to, that we're there encouraging one another. Hey, how's, how's your disciple making going? Hey, can I help you in that? Can I encourage in, you in that? Is there something you need? Um, I, I just loved it. Um, some of you know about this task force that uh, has come to Kingsburg and many other areas, in many other cities in our area, and now it's going around the country. But in, in the task force, it's, it's, this is what's happening. You got people with resources in our community, whether it's fire station, police, all kinds of media, entertainment, all kinds of, all kinds of things. And so people are invited to this task force. And, who, and what it is, it's the nonprofits that have resources and goodwilled people. And they just come together. Hey, here's what we're doing. And here's what I'm doing to try to reach out to our community and help it function better, help it reach out to one another, leave nobody behind, work together uh, in, in the, the, the governing areas of the city to make our city better. And I'm going, hey, that's what the church ought to do. We ought to be here saying, because now we have even more in common. We have the call of Christ. We're doing this for eternity, and we don't have to like not talk about that. We, we're talking about it. This is for Jesus. This is for who's going to be a disciple, a follower of Christ, and follow him all the way for all of eternity. So, church, are we encouraging one another? Somebody probably has resources that someone else could use in their discipling making. I probably have a book in my office that you would love to have to help talk to somebody that you're trying to help them become a disciple, a follower of Christ. And, and that goes, I'm not just the one with books. But there's some people here you need to know. They, they got some good libraries and some stuff that would help you fulfill your mission, complete your mission, have your dash count for all of eternity, have what is written there, whether it's someday there physically or not, but spiritually, that it says, what a good disciple maker they were. They continued what Jesus came to earth to do. 
And then they took that on and continued it in their world. Amen. So, praise team's going to come. We're going to sing my favorite song again. Thanks to Andrew. And I, I just said, hey, here's a good song if you want. But I'm going to just stand right here. And we're going to sing two songs, so we've got plenty of time. I would love it if you came by. Give me a five, either high or low. Give me an elbow. If you say, doggone it, pastor, that got to me today. Give me a hug. But it doesn't matter much about what you do to me. Will you, will you come down and say, hey, Jesus, thank you, thank you for completing your mission because it impacts my life. Thank you for now giving me a mission. And maybe you're coming down and just, just walking by, touch the table, bow at the step for a moment if you would like, what, whatever, whatever the Lord's guiding you. I don't want you to do this out of guilt or pressure or anything else. I just want you and the Lord to have a moment so that when you leave today, never again do you wonder what it means to be on mission. That never again you are not knowing what am I to do here on earth? Why did God put me here? Okay, we know what to do. Have a great time with the Lord. Let today be a day that helps you take a step, a big step, in why we're here on earth. What are we going to do as a body together? How we encourage one another. Let's make disciples. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your goodness and your love. Where would we be without it? Lord, help me be an ambassador one who's on mission. One who knows why I'm here. And that doesn't mean I know all the details. It just means I'm making a commitment to follow you and to say, yes, Lord. Where you lead me, where you prompt me, where you nudge me, count me in. I will go. I will follow. I will serve. I will love you back. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Thank you.
up the ground All my tradition Break down the walls All my religion Your way is better Your way is better Shake up the ground All my tradition Break down the walls All my religion Your way is better Yes, your way is better Break down the walls, all my religion, your way is better, your way is better, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room. that we couldn't escape but he came and he died and he rose those walls are rubble now remember those giants we called death and grave they were like mountains that stood in our way but he came and he died those giants are dead now this is our god this is who he is he loves us this is our god this is what he does he saves us he bore the cross beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our god king jesus remember that fear that took our breath away faith so weak that we could barely pray but he heard every word every whisper and now those altars in the tell the story of his faithfulness never once did he fail and he never will this is our god this is who he is he loves us and this is our god this is what he does he saves us he bore the cross beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did. He did, who paid for all of our sin, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but this is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. And this is our God. 
this is what he does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Jesus. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Jim up here to close us out. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, well, before I read here, um, I just feel like I want to say this. I don't know why, but I'm going to say this. I love you. You know, God loves you. You know, and you are loved today. You up there, you are loved today. Anybody watching on the TV there, you are loved. And uh, don't know why I'm saying that, but maybe somebody needs to hear that. Um, so here, Matthew 28, starting with verse 18, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have, be given, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I will always, uh, I am with you always, even to the end of age. So don't be afraid. He's with you. God is going to be with you. And at that right moment, at that time when you feel like you need to share, some, share Jesus with someone, the Holy Spirit will work through you and give you the words you need to speak. And I bless you this morning. Go and fulfill what God has called you to do. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is my testimony. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Yes, don't forget the business meeting right after this service. Downstairs. So everybody make your way downstairs. Come together, sons and daughters. Fought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Story.